and welcome everyone to yet another episode of Brain Cyclopedia. In today's episode, we will learn about the basic concepts of a very well-known classical behavioral theory called operant conditioning and reinforcement learning. Without further ado, let's get on to today's video. This video is a part one of a two-part video series. In today's part one video, we will first understand what is operant conditioning and touch down briefly on the origins of operant conditioning. Then we move on to understanding the concepts of reinforcement and punishment. In the part two of this video series, we will learn about the various schedules of reinforcement, but more on that in the next video. Operant conditioning can be defined as the process which allows an animal to develop associations between their action and the consequences or outcomes of those actions. Developing this association is essential because it is this association that allows one to learn the behaviours that they can pursue, such as the behaviours that have been rewarded, or the behaviours that they need to attenuate, such as the behaviours that have been unrewarded or subject to punishment. The origins of operant conditioning can be traced back to the seminal contributions of the well-known behavioural psychologist Behurus Frederick Skinner, or more commonly known as B.S. Skinner, and also referred to as the father of operant conditioning. Skinner proposed that human behaviour occurs as an outcome of conditioning. However, he had different views than Pavlov's classical conditioning theory. Skinner stated that the current classical conditioning theory was limited in explaining the existing behaviours that were elicited reflexively. As a result, the classical conditioning theory did not account for new behaviours such as how a person learns to drive a car. Thus, in Skinner's attempt to understand and theorise human learning, he proposed a theory that could explain how new behaviours were acquired via conditioning. Skinner observed that behaviours that are elicited by humans is usually motivated by the consequences or outcomes of the behaviours, such as reinforcements or rewards, or punishments that they receive as an outcome or consequence of one's behaviour. Skinner's idea that learning is a result of the consequences was based on the seminal idea of law of effect, a concept which was proposed by psychologist Edward Thorndike. According to the law of effect, Behaviours that are followed by consequences that are satisfying to the organism are more likely to be repeated, and behaviours that are followed by unpleasant or punishment-like consequences are less likely to be repeated. Essentially, if an organism does something that brings about desirable results, they will in fact do it more in the future. And contrarily, if the organism does something that does not bring about desired results, they will attenuate or are less likely to repeat that behavior again. Working with Thorndike's law of effect as his foundation, Skinner began conducting experiments with animals, more specifically rats and pigeons. His goal was to determine how organisms learned through his principles of operant conditioning and he conducted many studies in the early 1940s. He placed these animals inside an operant conditioning chamber, which he built specifically to test his predictions and hypotheses about the operant conditioning theory that he postulated. He called this the Skinner's box. A Skinner's box contains various elements that can help a person test the predictions of the Skinner's theory. More specifically, a Skinner's box contains a lever for rats or a disc for pigeons that will allow the animal to sort of press them and or peck them for getting a reward, such as food, via the dispenser. Speakers and lights can be associated with certain behaviours as cues for rewards or punishments and a recorder will account for the number of responses that the animal makes. Skinner performed many experiments with his operant conditioning chamber or the Skinner's box in order to find evidence for his theory. 
Before moving any further, let's clarify a few terminologies that will help us understand the concepts of reinforcement and punishment better. In the context of the operant conditioning theory, we use many everyday terminologies such as the words positive and negative. In everyday context, the word positive could be meaning something good and negative as something bad. However, in the context of the operant conditioning theory, this is not what these words mean. In the context of operant conditioning, the terminology positive stands for adding something and negative stands for removing something. Now keep this in mind as it will help you understand the concepts of reinforcement and punishment even better. Now that we understand the concept of positive and negative in the context of operant conditioning, let's move on to understanding the concept of reinforcement or a reinforcer. A reinforcer can be defined as anything that increases the likelihood that a specific behavior will occur with greater intensity if the reinforcer is paired with that activity. A reinforcer can be a positive reinforcer or a negative reinforcer. A positive reinforcer is a desirable stimulus which is added following an action with an intention to increase the said behavior. Take for example, every time you finish your homework, your mother gives you your favorite treats or candies. In this scenario, the candies are the positive reinforcer that is likely to shape your behavior to finish homework on time every day. Interestingly enough, it has been found that positive reinforcers or positive reinforcement can be used as a learning tool as it is extremely effective. For instance, it has been found that one of the most effective ways to increase achievement in school districts with below average reading scores was to pay children to read, wherein paying acted as a positive reinforcer. Fryer in 2010 found evidence for this. This study showed that when second grade students in Dallas were paid $2 each time they read a book and passed a short quiz about the book, the reading comprehension of these second graders increased significantly. The negative reinforcement or negative reinforcer, on the other hand, is the removal of an undesirable stimulus, which is subtracted or removed following an action with the intention to increase the said behavior. Let's take an example from everyday life. For instance, you dislike getting stuck in traffic on your way to work on a Monday morning. So to avoid the traffic, you wake up early and leave early and thereby you avoid all of that Monday morning rush. Negative reinforcers work to shape and modify behaviours because aversive stimuli tend to involve some type of discomfort, either physical or psychological. Behaviours are negatively reinforced when they allow you to escape from the aversive stimuli that are already present or allow you to completely avoid the aversive stimuli before they happen. Now there are two forms of reinforcers. We have primary reinforcers and secondary reinforcers. A primary reinforcer is any reinforcer that has some form of innate reinforcing quality. This means that the presence of the primary reinforcer by itself is enough for behavior modification in the context of operant conditioning. Secondary reinforcers, on the other hand, has no inherent value and only has reinforcing qualities when linked with a primary reinforcer. Let's understand the concept of punishment in the context of operant conditioning theory. Punishment is the opposite of a reinforcer that decreases, weakens or eliminates the likelihood that a specific behavior will occur when the punishment is paired with a behavior. Punishments can be positive in nature or negative punishments. Positive punishment refers to adding an undesirable stimulus to decrease a behavior. For example, if a student is found texting during class, the teacher is likely to scold the student if this behavior occurs. In this example, 
The scolding, which is an undesirable stimulus, is the positive punishment, which is aimed at decreasing the behavior of texting during class. Negative punishment, on the other hand, refers to removing a desirable or pleasant stimulus to decrease a specific behavior. For example, if you want to reduce your social media engagement, you may set a rule for yourself that if I spend more than 20 minutes a day on my social media apps, I will restrict my access to my favorite sweets or treats. Since you like eating your favorite sweets, restricting them is undesirable. So to avoid this, you will decrease your behavior of engaging in social media apps for more than 20 minutes a day. All right, so we've learned a lot of different concepts in today's video and it can seem fairly confusing. So in this last part of the video, let's quickly summarize and consolidate what we learned today. Remember that a reinforcer or reinforcement of some sort is any stimuli that aims at increasing a particular behavior. On the other hand, punishment does just the opposite by trying to decrease a particular behavior. Positive reinforcement or a positive reinforcer is any stimulus that is added to increase the likelihood of a behavior. On the other hand, a negative reinforcer or a negative reinforcement is any stimulus which is removed to increase the likelihood of a behavior. A positive punishment, on the other hand, is any stimulus that is added to decrease the likelihood of a behavior, while a negative punishment is any stimulus which is removed to decrease the likelihood of a behavior. You can pause the video at this stage and take a screenshot of this summary table in order to revise these concepts and consolidate the material from today's video at a later time. All right, that is the end of today's video. If you haven't already, subscribe to Brain Cyclopedia today, leave a like, share this video with someone you think will benefit from today's content, comment below and leave your feedback or a future video request and press the bell icon to remain updated about new uploads. Follow us on all of our social media sites and join the family. The link of all of these sites are in the description box below. If you liked our content, please consider making a donation to our channel on our buymecoffee.com page. The link of this will be pinned to the comment section as well as in the description box below. See you in our next video.